Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to show you how to anneal sterling silver. Annealing is a process where you use a heat source to heat metal to an annealing temperature which causes the atomic structure of the metal to become organized and causes the metal to become more workable and softened. Now to do this you're going to need the following tools. Number one, you're going to need a heat source. Now I'm going to be using a butane torch that's capable of reaching a temperature of 1500 degrees. Now annealing for silver takes place between 1110 and 1200 degrees Fahrenheit where it has a melting temperature of slightly over 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a good torch. Now you're also going to need something to pick up the item off of your annealing surface in order to quench it. In this case I'm going to use a pair of copper tongs. It, when you anneal silver you may sometimes like to apply a bit of flux to the surface to reduce the amount of oxidation that will occur on the metal surface. So I have a flux brush and some paste flux for silver. I also have the materials that I'm going to anneal today. I have a wire that is a six gauge half round silver wire that's suitable for a ring project and some 20 gauge round sterling silver wire that's suitable for wire wrapping or making ear wires. Now I also have a hardened charcoal block that I'm going to use as an area to heat on top of. Now this is resting on top of a piece of ceramic kiln shelf. So this ceramic surface will protect my bench top from being burned. I also have a water source or a quenching bowl in order to cool down the metal after it's been heated. And to carry away any hazardous fumes that might occur from this process, I have a ventilation source. Now, be sure to protect yourself by putting on an apron and put on a pair of eye protection. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is to place the item on top of the heating surface. Now I'm going to be heating this with a bit of flux on top of it. So just dip into your flux and then just paint the entire surface. Now you do want to paint it uh, on the front and the back because you will be exposing the entire surface to heat. The charcoal block is going to heat up and it's going to reflect heat on the back surface. So we're covering this up. Okay, now I can set this aside. Next I'm going to turn on my torch. The blue tip of the flame is the hottest point of the flame. So you want to bring that close to your work as soon as possible in order to maximize the amount of heat that you're applying to the piece. Now keep this flame moving at all times and what we're doing is we're essentially working from one end to the other with this length of wire. Now you can see that the flux is drying and it will dry along the whole piece. Now I'd like to work from one end to the other rather than moving back and forth. But notice I'm keeping the flame moving and I'm keeping the tip of the flame close to the item. Now flux will go through three different phases. It goes through the liquid phase, then it becomes a dry powdery material, and then it becomes kind of gummy. Now if you're only going to lightly anneal a piece, when you reach the temperature with, that causes the flux to clarify or become clear, you could stop. But notice one end of the piece has a clarified flux and the other is still a little bit cloudy and gummy. All right, so I'm keeping the heat on my piece and what I'm looking for is to achieve sort of a reddish pinkish glow from the silver. You need to maintain that reddish pinkish glow for approximately 30 seconds in order for the piece to become fully annealed. All right, so we're going to chase the heat down the length of the wire, keeping the flame constantly moving. 
That way, you're going to be sure that you anneal the whole piece. All right, that ought to do it. So I'll turn off my torch. Now, if you are afraid of developing cracks in a piece, what I would recommend is that you move your object to a steel surface like the top of an anvil or the top of a bench block in order to cool. But if it's a piece of wire that hasn't been worked at all yet, you're pretty safe to just pick it up and drop it in your quench bowl. Next, you would put this into your pickle pot in order to clean it and remove any of the flux or oxidation that's developed on the surface. Okay, let me show you how to anneal a thin length of wire. Now, this is a 20 gauge round piece of sterling silver wire, and it would be very, very easy to melt with the flame. So in order to improve the odds that we're not going to melt this wire, what we want to do is to bunch it together. And the way that I do this is I lay my fingers out and I just wind the wire loosely around my fingers. Now what this does is it doesn't increase the mass itself, but it, cre it creates a larger surface area that's more difficult for the flame to melt. Okay, once you've wound the wire nice and tight, then take the loose ends and then just lightly wrap them around the wire in order to keep it together while you anneal it. And you can simply just drop this on top of your annealing surface in order to do the process. Okay, I'm ready to anneal the thin 20 gauge round sterling silver wire. Again, what I need to do is turn on my torch now this time I'm going to anneal without the flux. So I'm going to come directly to the wire and this time I'm going to already just start to chase the heat around the length of wire keeping the cone of the or the tip of the blue cone of the flame close to the wire. Now this time you're going to see that the wire begins to oxidize or it blackens slightly as it gets heated by the flame. Remember, what we're looking for is a dull, pinkish, reddish glow. We don't want it to turn white hot or red hot. We just want a dull glow. And there it is right there. So I'm just going to keep this in the heat for a few seconds just to make sure that the whole length of the wire is annealed. Okay, that ought to do it. Now I'm ready to pick it up with the copper tongs and quench it. Now, if you don't want to anneal thin wire like that, what you could do is when you order wire from a jewelry supplier, you could request wire that is already dead soft, which means that it's been annealed in an industrial kiln that has no oxygen in it so that no oxidation of the metal surface can occur. Good luck with your annealing projects. Thanks for watching this video and check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com.